Hello and welcome to this lecture video about hidden layers, meaning layers of material that are impossible to detect via the refraction method. The first type of hidden layer your book refers to as hidden layer proper. And in this case, refraction from the middle layer is overtaken by refraction from a deeper layer before it travels long enough along the boundary to arrive before the direct wave. Okay, so remember, the critically refracted wave is refracted all the way up to the boundary where it travels at a faster pace than in the layer above, and eventually that enables it to arrive before the head wave, the direct wave. In the case of a hidden layer, then that uh, energy that traveled along the boundary between layer one and layer two, um, while it does eventually arrive earlier than the direct wave, there's another layer below it that sort of beats it, um, beats it to that. So the depth calculated to the top of what you think is the apparent layer, uh, what you think is the second layer, because the true second layer is completely invisible to you, is going to be somewhere between the true depth of the top of layer two and the true depth of the top of layer three. And when you look at this data set, all you're going to see is two layers, right? So there's your first layer, there's your second layer. It's going to give you a fine velocity, but that intercept time is going to give you a depth that's not quite right for any of those layers. The deeper critically refracted ray is going to be able to overtake the direct ray before the intermediate critically refracted ray uh, under two conditions. One is that the second layer is just too thin. And the second and the other condition is that the third layer has a much faster velocity than the second layer. In practice, um, you know, you could have what you think is a thick layer, but then if the velocity is super fast of the third layer, then it's still going to the energy is still going to beat energy from the second layer simply by traveling through the third. Uh, or if you have what you think is a thin layer, but the next layer down, the velocity difference isn't that big, then you might still be able to pick it up. So that's just a long way of saying that depending on both the layer thickness and the velocity of the deeper layer is going to determine whether or not a layer is possible to be imaged with the refraction technique. Okay, so the second type of low of hidden layer that we're going to discuss is the low velocity layer. So in this case, in, when the energy is refracted at the interface, instead of bending away from the normal on a path that could pick it up towards the surface, instead that energy bends towards the normal in a path that's going to take it deeper into the subsurface. So the first critically refracted wave that you're going to be able to detect back at your instrument is not going to have anything to do with that. Um, it's, it's not going to be representative of that second layer and is instead going to come in with a speed representing the velocity of the third layer, right? So we have rays coming in, being refracted away from the normal. So light never travels along, I mean, uh, seismic energy never travels along this interface at the speed of V2. We just don't get that at all. But then when it goes into the third layer, it can hit at the um, angle of refraction and travel at the velocity of the third layer. So the one over the slope of this line is actually going to give you the velocity of the third layer. And you can't tell that there even is a second layer. You will be able to detect accurate velocities in this case, but your depths will be incorrect. There's multiple causes for the low velocity layer. You um, have a lot of different geologies that can result in it. If you had sand beneath clay, sedimentary rock beneath igneous, or sandstone beneath limestone, those are some of the more common examples. Uh, in most cases, luckily, you do have uh, layers with faster seismic velocities as you go downwards, um, but occasionally the low velocity layer may appear. You might ask how you can tell. Well, if all you had was the geophysical data, you couldn't. 
the low velocity layer is completely invisible. So it really takes other outside geologic knowledge and able to be able to pin this down, which is why field work is still so important. You could dig some boreholes, look at existing geologic maps, make some geologic cross sections from those maps, try to figure out uh, where you expect things to be in the subsurface, and then check that it matches what your seismic data is telling you. So just to recap, we've got two types of hidden layers. And that means layers that it's impossible to detect with the seismic refraction method. The first is the hidden layer proper, which means that even though all the layers are increasing in velocity with depth, one layer is either too thin or has too fast of a different material beneath it for the head wave from that center material to ever both arrive before the direct wave and before the head wave from the next layer down. The other type of hidden layer is the low velocity layer. In this case, because energy is bending down towards the Earth, we have no critically refracted rays representing the velocity of one of our layers. And so uh, that just stops us from being able to detect the layer. And that is it for those special cases. By this point, you can hopefully uh, explain how it is that certain layers might be missed by the seismic refraction method. And also from previous lectures, you should understand how to perform picking of a seismic data set and what to do with that data in order to determine geologic information about the subsurface. Thank you.